Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Yesterday, I kind of uh, showed the new uh, digital mode FT8. Today, I'd like to uh, just run you through the software a little bit, make an actual contact. Uh, it's kind of tricky uh, how you have to do that because it goes so fast. But it's not really that hard. So uh, hang tight. I'm going to switch you over to the screen. And we're going to start looking at the uh, WSJTX software that decodes FT8. So here we go. So here we are uh, on the flex radio at 14.074. I've got the sound muted. You want to hear it again? Here it is. So anyway, that's an FT8 signal. <clears throat> Let's kind of move this out of the way. And here is WSJTX running, and you can see it's decoding right now on the left-hand panel. <laughs> Before we get into this. Let's uh, take you up here. I'm going to click File, Settings, and let me move that window over here. And as you can see, I'm using Ham Radio Deluxe to key the radio right now. Now you can, you know, change this. Under this tab, there are myriad radios that you can select from. I just use uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. It's like an instant connection. It requires no thought. <clears throat> just uh, set it up to use Ham Radio Deluxe and then open Ham Radio Deluxe first. And I do have it running in the background. You can see it down here. Uh, and uh, immediately all the connections are uh, pretty good. I did go in and double check the audio connections, and in my case, uh, you know, audio uh, cable number two is uh, the input, and audio cable number one is the output. Uh, those are virtual audio cables that I've already set up in the Flex Radio. Other than that, I didn't mess with any of these other settings. I, I just made sure the radio keyed, and you can do that by testing the cat first, clicking this button, and then by testing the push to talk button, which will light up after you test it. But I know it's working right now with these settings, so I'm not going to mess with that. But once you select the radio, you know, if you want to test it, you can just click this button. If it turns green, your cat connection is, or whatever connection you're using is working. And then this button will light up and you can test uh, push to talk uh, just to see if it actually does key the radio. So anyway, that's really all there is to setting up the software. Uh, now, to... Do a, do a uh, uh, contact, you've got to go through these various menus here, starting with uh, the first one up here, which gives your call sign and your grid location. However, if you check this little auto sequence box right here, it will, once you make a connection or a contact with someone, in other words, by double-clicking one of these uh, green CQs, uh, from then on it'll operate automatically and it'll run through all these uh, settings without you doing anything other than uh, what I do at the end, once I've given a 73, I come up here and click the Halt Transmit button just to make sure it doesn't keep trying to transmit. That may just be me doing that, and you may not have to do that, but I, I do that anyway. <laughs> I click the halt button and stop it. Anyway, uh, let's do the uh, 
look around here and look for somebody transmitting. We'll try to make a contact real quick here, show you how it goes. Let me wait for the next sequence, and here's a guy right here, and we'll enable transmit. Let me turn on the volume. Well, no, we don't need to turn the volume on. We can just watch it. Let's see what it does right now. And there was my phone, which I just turned off. And here I go, I'm transmitting again. He's calling CQ again, and I'm transmitting again. Notice, I didn't fool around with trying to do it real fast. I just double-clicked him, and then I hit uh, Enable Transmit. So what I'm doing is forcing, kind of forcing the software to sync up with uh, KC3DGM. Let's see if it works. We'll know if it works in a minute. And looking up here, he's kind of a weak signal to me. I don't really have a good uh, signal on this guy. And I've got my beam pointed uh, at about 40 degrees. And I am transmitting at about 23 watts right now, and I'm seeing that on the meter. So let's just give it a few more times here to see if I eventually get through. If not, I'm going to switch to another CQ here. I'll just halt this. But let's just do it right now. We'll just halt it. He could be a new guy that doesn't know how to answer the CQ. Whoop, well, here he goes. He just answered me. Let's see if uh, it's still going. Could be a new person that doesn't really know how to uh, answer the CQ. So we'll just continue on with this. He's given me a minus 19. That's quite a weak signal. Or I'm giving him a minus 19. That's a weak signal to me. And I've transmitted it twice now. Let's see what he does. Could just be that our signals are too weak. To make a full contact, we'll just keep on after it, see what happens. And uh, one more time. Now. I'm going to halt this transmit. I'm going to clear the screen with the erase button. And I'm going to try somebody else. Let's let another sequence come in. And then I'll try it again. No one is calling CQ on that sequence. So we'll let it ride again. Here's what I'm looking at. The bottom of the box. And here we go. He's trying to answer me. So let me try to answer him. See what happens. He's given me a minus 19 again. I'm sorry, a minus 2 is what he gave me. I'm strong into him. Let's see what it turns out to be. It's showing a... Uh, it's showing him at zero, zero now. He could have had a beam or no telling. It's a new mode. And uh, he's given me a zero, zero report now. Let's see what, uh, if it continues on with the transmission. He gave me a minus two and a minus zero. I gave him a minus 19. And I'm giving him a 73 now. Automatically. It's automatically doing this. It's just running down this list here. Let's 
So KC3DGM, KC3DGM, uh, and uh, he's giving me a 73 right back. So we got a good contact there. And once this is over, I will halt the transmission. As you can see, it keeps trying to transmit if you don't halt it. Uh, I don't. <laughs> that's something that uh, Joe Taylor needs to improve. Maybe that on this 73 it drops it. I'll look around the settings. There could be a checkbox somewhere that says, uh, you know, drop the receive at, uh, after you transmit 73, and I may not have it checked. We'll look at that in a minute. But anyway, I do have a contact with KC3DGM. And uh, we'll log him in a minute. Let's clear this window, and then I'm going to go up here in the configuration. Let's just look around and see if there is a setting that basically says uh, drop the connection. Well, here's one that says blank line between decoding. Give me the distance in miles. Uh, transmit my show DXC. I don't have that checked. Monitor off at startup. Monitor returns to last use. No, don't have any of that. Double click on call sets transmit enable. Let me check that one. And disable transmit after sending 73. Well, what do you know? I don't have it checked, and now I do. So anyway, we're still experimenting with this, and you're experimenting with it right along with me. So now that should solve my problem. In other words, the second I uh, double-click someone, I won't have to go up there and enable transmit. And once I transmit 73, it'll drop out. So hopefully, uh, you know, that will... Uh, <laughs> That will uh, solve my problem there. Looking at these other ones, uh, I'm not working microwave. Uh, I don't want to change frequencies while transmitting. Uh, I don't want a single decode. And uh, I'm not doing EME right now, so I'm not going to check that. So uh, let's say OK and uh, clear this uh, window. Let's try another one here. As soon as we get another decode, we'll try another one. W, here's another one. And there we go. Here is W8JY. Let's see what we do with this fella. And got to wait a second. WSJY, W8. JY and uh, I just transmit transmitted my grid to him again. Let's see if I get something back. Looking at the screen, hopefully we'll get something. I didn't get anything that time either. Again, everybody is experimenting with this, and you know, a lot of the software is not set up properly, uh, or, uh, you know, I'm not operating it properly. I think I am, but uh, apparently not. Still transmitting the W8JY to W8JY and uh, waiting to see if he'll answer me back. And I got a pretty good signal on him up here in the waterfall. You can see where I am. Got a pretty good signal on him, but he is not answering me. So I'm going to halt transmit, erase, and uh, see what we get next. Try it again. And we'll just wait a second. See if we can make another contact here. And here we go. There we go, right there. 
And we'll try, uh, this time we're trying WB2REM. WB2REM. And uh, see what we get, if we get an answer back. Nope, no answer back. One more code. Oh, there we go. He's got me at a minus 14. I've got him at a minus 8. And where I'm getting that from is right here. You can see I'm showing him a minus 8 up here. You can see why I'm showing him a minus 8 right now. Let's see if he received it on the next go around. Again, I'm not pointing the beam at any of these guys. I could be way off. He sent me a Roger, Roger, Roger. I'm sending him a 73. Goes real fast. I, I don't really think there's any way. Uh, you can do this manually. You might be able to if everybody slows down, you know, and does it manually. But when they're using this automatic sequence, it goes very, very fast. So he gave me a 73 back. And uh, <clears throat> right there. And uh, that's it. This is a good contact with WB2REM. And in a second here, uh, I'll erase this. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up my web browser. I've got it uh, in QRZ and EQSL already. So I want to show you how you log these real fast at the current time. And we'll check again and see if uh, QRZ has corrected for FT8, if it's actually there. Uh, WB2REM, and here he is right here. He is in, ah, well, that's why I was getting the weak signal. He's in Port uh, St. Lucia, Florida. My beam was pointed at New York, so uh, <laughs> I was actually off the side of the beam there with him. That's why I got that minus 14. Anyway, uh, no big deal. It's still a good contact. So let's uh, come down here and log a contact with this guy. And uh, we're going to look around now for FT8. I don't expect to find it. Okay? Alphabetical. You can see there's no FT8 here at all. Let's just, out of curiosity, look around JP65, see if they misplaced it somewhere. I don't see an FT8 anywhere in the drop-down box. So, what I've been doing until they get it corrected is uh, I come in here, it says JT65, which is wrong. And I come in here and enter the signal reports, uh, just like you do JT65 with minus DB uh, signal reports. And again, I'm operating at 23 watts right now. <clears throat> and in the comments box, I put FT8 contact. Now what that does for me, I'll show you that right now. Let's kind of correct this time. This time was actually about three minutes ago, so we'll go change that. And we'll save this contact. And as you can see in my logbook, there's a big comment right here telling me this is an F8 contact. So at such and such a time as QRZ, uh, is able to uh, show FT8 in the drop-down box. I'll just come back to these contacts 
and uh, the ones that say FTA and just edit it and then it'll show as a good contact. No big deal, it won't take me five minutes to do that. Uh, <clears throat> now let's go over to EQSL. As you can see, there is already an FTA in their drop down box. So they're good to go now. So let's log this contact, WB2, REN, and I gave him a minus 8, and I'm going to just say 73, and the time that I've logged in is 17.25. So we'll put that right here. And we are done, and I have logged that contact both in QRZ and EQSL. That's really all there is to it, uh, and that's how I do most of my logging. I keep these two tabs up, and of course when I'm not talking it goes a little bit faster. <laughs> and uh, while I'm making the contact, I'll enter it in QRZ, and then... Uh, once I'm done, I jump over here and enter it in the EQSL. I actually don't use logging software to uh, automatically log the contacts. Later, I will come here and I will go to this tab right here that has all my contacts uh, in it, as you can see here. And I go down to the bottom, and I click this download button right here at the bottom, and it will uh, send me an ABIF file of all my contacts. I simply save that onto my computer, and then at some time uh, later that day or the next day or whatever, I will upload that. ADI file that I created off of EQSL, I'll upload it directly into LOTW, uh, Club Log, and uh, uh, into uh, Ham Radio Deluxe Log. I'll do all three of those. Again, that only takes a couple of minutes to do that. So. It's not really that slow, and, and that way I've got a copy of my log on my computer in ADIF file format, which I can import into a multitude of logging software, uh, if I actually want to have a copy of it that I can manipulate. Anyway, that's... Uh, enough for this video. I think that gave you a pretty good idea of um, how to do FT8 and it's still running and still going along. Let me get you over here and kind of shut this video off and say thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all and keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Everybody be good. 73 clear sky. See y'all later and try out FT8.